How's it going, guys? It is 3.56 a.m., the 4th of June, here in Japan, and we have a medium difficulty question for pharmacology for step one slash path, histo, genitourinary. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, and me, man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Link to the Telegram group down below. Now, start the clip. 72-year-old man comes to the physician. One week history of intermittent low-grade fever and pain with urination, a biopsy, the prostate is shown. Which the following is most appropriate pharmacologic management management for this patient? We have this histo slide here. Now, many of you are not going to know what this is. I have harped on this in my prior YouTube clips, okay? Which is that this is prostatitis. However, you say, really? We need to know that? Like, we need to know the histo? Not really. What U.S. simile does give a fuck about is you know that these dense blue cells... So purple, blue means basophilic, pink means eosinophilic. So we have lots of dense basophilic cells on an eosinophilic background. These are neutrophils, okay? So this is a very nonspecific histo slide that you can get a nearly identical looking one for pyelonephritis as an example. I literally think within the past couple weeks or so, I put out a very similar histo slide for pyelonephritis. So this is prostatitis. We've got neutrophilic infiltration here. So question wants to know how to treat. Now, U.S. Sommelius, especially step one, they don't obsess over specific treatments per se. However, for whatever reason, prostatitis, pyelonephritis are treated the same way. And U.S. Simile does care, okay? It's one of the treatments that's known to show up on step one. For step two, it will show up. So let's just hop through the answer choice here. Choice A, 30 S ribosomal also be inhibitor on fucking answer. So immunoglycosides, tetracyclines could do a 16 minute discussion. Uh, obviously immunoglycosides, uh, they are going to inhibit formation of the initiation complex, cause misreading of the mRNA, and they cause acute tubular necrosis and uh, ototoxicity, okay? It need not just be tinnitus, it can be vertigo, the room is spinning. Long discussion, okay? Uh, tetracyclines, classically photosensitivity. They can cause gingival hyperplasia. Used for Lyme disease, okay? 40-minute discussion. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, 50S, ribosomal sub inhibitor, wrong fucking answer. This would refer to macrolides, chloramphenicol, clindamycin, linizolid. The latter doesn't exist in U.S. simile. Clindamycin, high yield for treatment of pulmonary abscess, okay? Chloramphenicol, non-existent on U.S. simile. can cause great baby syndrome. U.S. simile doesn't give a fuck. Obviously, macrolides, super high yield. Azithromycin shows up in NBME 9 for TCK, straight up as the answer for community-acquired treatment for pneumonia, okay? You need to know that. Obviously, for uh, chlamydia, urethritis, as an example, or neonatal conjunctivitis, chlamydia, you're going to give oral erythromycin, so it's a long discussion as well. Point is... Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, NF, kappa B inhibitor, wrong fucking answer. So, I mean, this is a very non-specific answer choice, okay? But in relation to U.S. simile, they want you to know that steroids, corticosteroids, will decrease NF, kappa B pathway activation slash transcription of genes. There is a very nitpicky molecular type question that repeats on the NBME exams you need to know which is going to be that there is something called I kappa beta, I, I kappa beta, I kappa B, okay? It stands for inhibitor of NF kappa B. So I kappa B is going to be bound to NF kappa B in the cytosol. And the quote that you need to know is the answer choice the immune exam is, I kappa B releases NF kappa B after undergoing phosphorylation. I don't know what to fucking tell you, okay? It's asked multiple times, and students get it wrong all the time. It's a fact that you need to know. So normally, I kappa B, when it's phosphorylated, it releases NF kappa B. NF kappa B goes to the nucleus, upregulates gene transcription, causes inflammation. Well, steroids prevent the phosphorylation and degradation of I kappa B, so it will remain bound to NF kappa B in the cytosol. NF kappa B in turn doesn't go to the nucleus, doesn't upregulate gene transcription. We don't get inflammation. Okay, so we're decreasing uh, T cell response as well as a result of corticosteroids. U.S. Emily really likes that stuff. Wrong fucking answer. 
choice D two lymphocyte inhibitor on fucking answer could refer to numerous agents. Okay, so as I just said, uh, corticosteroids could refer to some obscure agents: uh, IL two receptor antagonists, diclizumab, uh, basiliximab. Could refer to the uh, agents such as uh, calcineurin inhibitors, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, <clears throat> as well as sirolimus, okay, mTOR inhibitor. It's a long discussion, okay? So all these agents are going to decrease T cell uh, activation in some form, whether it's responsiveness to IL-2 or decreased transcription of IL-2 or inhibiting the IL-2 receptor. It's a long discussion. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, topoisomerase 2,4 inhibitor, aka DNA gyrus inhibitor, topoisomerase. So uh, refers to fluoroquinolones. Correct answer, okay? E.g., ciprofloxin. So ciprofloxin is going to be, or i.e., ciprofloxin is classic treatment for pyelonephritis, prostatitis, the latter which we have here. So obviously we have uh, levofloxin as well, or respiratory fluoroquinolone, better pulmonary parenchymal penetration can be used in patients who um, aren't going to be on a macrolide uh, for community-acquired pneumonia who've had antibiotics the past three months. We're getting into nitpicky specifics here, right? But if, for example, you're studying for step one, uh, you're on IM for 2CK, and someone just says to you, well, when would we give a fluoroquinolone? Like, when would we ever use those? Your response is going to be, oh, you have somebody likes uh, ciprofloxin for prostatitis and pyelonephritis. Very simple, okay? And then you can say, those are the two highest yield. And then you can say, by the way, respiratory fluoroquinolones like levofloxin can sometimes be used uh, in patients of community-acquired pneumonia if they're not going to be on a macrolide such as azithromycin because they've had antibiotics in the past three months, okay, or other significant comorbidities. So topoisomerase uh, is normally causes nicks in the DNA, prevents supercoiling. So sometimes USMLE, they can be uh, obscure and they can just say like prevents uh, DNA nicking type of thing. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.